Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. f of x minus square root of x plus 1 equals square root of x, and we're going to evaluate f of 21 over 16. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So here's my first method. First of all, I'm going to rewrite the problem, f of x minus square root of x plus 1 equals square root of x and we're supposed to evaluate f of 21 over 16. Okay, great. Now I'm going to go ahead and substitute t equals square root of x. And notice that t needs to be greater than 0. I exclude 0 because if t is equal to 0, x is going to be 0, but obviously that's not going to give us what we want. So we can safely say that t must be greater than 0. Now when you do that substitution here, you're going to get f of x, which is x um, t squared, because if you square both sides, you get t squared equals x. So this is going to be t squared minus t plus 1 equals t. Now, let's go ahead and make another substitution. Let's set this equal to y. You can also use another variable if you're not familiar with f of y. Some people use y for f of x. So you can do whatever you want. Okay, so now we have t squared minus t plus 1 equals y. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to complete the square here. Our goal is to solve for t in this equation, okay? So let's go ahead and write it as follows. t squared minus t, and I'm going to break down the 1 into 1 fourth plus 3 fourths. And that is equal to y. Now, the idea is to turn this into a perfect square plus something. So this part can be written as t minus 1 half squared, which is a perfect square, plus 3 fourths equals y. Now, we're going to go ahead and subtract 3 fourths. And then square root both sides. But notice we're going to get two results from square rooting uh, using the absolute value. So I'm going to write it as t minus 1 half equals plus minus the square root of y minus 3 fourths. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and add 1 half to both sides so that we can get t by itself. t equals 1 half plus minus the square root of y minus 3 fourths. So now this, the right-hand side is kind of like a function of y, even though it's not well-defined because we have two results. But for the time being, we can just go ahead and call this f of y. And our goal is to find f of 21 over 16, right? So since we're trying to find this, here it makes sense that we replace y with 21 over 16. But we're going to do it on both um, in both cases, so that way you're going to be able to see what happens in each case. Okay? So, for example, if I replace, so this is what I'm focusing on right now. If I go ahead and replace y with 21 over 16, let's go ahead and use the first one first. So, f of 21 over 16 is going to be 1 half plus the square root of 21 over 16 minus 3 fourths. This is the positive version or the plus version. This is 21 minus 9, which is 12, right? Because I'm supposed to multiply. 12, 12, 21 minus 12, which is 9 over 16. So that's going to be 3 fourths when I square root it. And then when you add these, you're going to get 5 fourths. So it looks like f of 21 over 16 can be 5 fourths or can it? We'll see. Here's the second option using the minus sign f of 21 over 16, so I'm going to use this sign now, okay, can be written as 1 half. Everything is pretty much the same, except you're going to put a minus sign here. So it's going to be like 1 half minus 3 fourths, but it adds negative 1 fourth. But remember, this f of y thing is equal to t, right? And what did we say about t before? We said that, hey, t needs to be positive. So this is not acceptable. Even though we get two results from the square rooting, this value is not going to be accepted. Make sense? Hopefully it does. So the value that we're looking for, f of, let me rewrite it, 21 over 16 
is going to be 5 fourths. What was the function? f of x minus square root of x plus 1 equals square root of x. So that's going to be the answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And then I'm going to show you a graph at the end, which kind of deals with inverse functions. So let's go ahead and do the second method. So to rewrite the equation, we are given f of x minus square root of x plus 1 equals square root of x. And I'm pretty sure you t thought about this method first because first method was kind of very brute forcey and I know some people find it unnecessary. But I just wanted to walk you through the process. You know, e even though it's painful, I think it's helpful. So directly think about this. I want to find f of something, and I have f of something, right? Something else, whatever. So wouldn't that be reasonable to set this whole thing inside the parentheses equal to 21 over 16? It would totally make sense, right? x minus square root of x plus 1 equals 21 over 16. And whatever the x value I find, I'm going to write it on, the, I'm going to substitute that here, and that'll give me the answer. Make sense? Pretty straightforward, right? Hopefully. But this is a radical equation. So how do I solve it, right? Uh, subtract 1. Uh, it's going to be 5 over 16. So this is a radical equation. There's a couple different ways to go about it. For example, you can isolate square root of x and square both sides, right? Let's go ahead and do it. That gives us x squared minus uh, 10 over 16, which is 5 over 8 x plus uh, 25 over 256 equals x. And then you can put the x on the left-hand side. x squared minus 5 over 8 minus 1 is 13 over 8x plus 25 over 256 equals 0. And then you can solve for x from here. When you solve for x, you're going to notice um, the following. You're going to notice that x equals 25 over 16 from here. Okay? Just to spare you the trouble, I solve this equation for you. Now, remember we said that whatever that x value, we're going to substitute that on the right-hand side because we have f of x minus square root of x plus 1 equals square root of x, and we know that x is equal to this. So f of 21 over 16 equals square root of 25 over 16, which is 5 fourths. Okay, so that kind of checks with the first method, and pretty much that's what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. Now, here's another approach for finding x here. So once we get x minus square root of x plus 1 equals 21 over 16, or you can just go ahead and put everything here, minus, you know, uh, 5 over 16 equals 0, and then you can set square root of x equals u, and then you'll get a quadratic, but then you have to pick the u value that is positive. Make sense? Same idea. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. I wanted to show you the graph of x squared minus x plus 1, which is basically the t squared minus t plus 1, because we remember we replaced square root of x with t. That's what we got. But I restricted the domain so you can get the whole nice symmetry here with inverse functions. And this is the inverse function of f of x. Notice that they're symmetrical. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.